If you experience pain in the back of your hip, kind of right here deep in your glute, that could be a piriformis syndrome. In this video, we'll talk about what it is, why you get it, and most importantly, I'm gonna show you how to alleviate it in about 90 seconds. Now, first of all, what is piriformis syndrome? Well, your piriformis is a small muscle right here deep in your glute that is responsible for rotating your hip. When that muscle gets tight or weak or otherwise inflamed or irritated, it can cause pain right in that area or it can even pinch down on your sciatic nerve and recreate sciatic symptoms that travel down your leg. Now the best treatment for this pain is a threefold approach. We first need to mobilize that muscle to decrease tension. We then need to stretch it to improve range of motion. And then finally, we need to strengthen it to improve stability and decrease pain long-term. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of different stretches and exercises in each of those three categories. Now, if you're looking for the quick fix, you pick one from each category, perform that for 30 seconds, and there is your 90 second solution. However, that is a quick fix. If you were to come to see me in my clinic, what I would encourage you to do is at least one of the mobilizations, two or more of the stretches, and then two or more of the strengthening exercises. So if you have the time, I certainly encourage you to perform all of them. If you're looking for the quick solution really fast, then again, the 90 second, kind of the one from each category is a good solution as well. That being said, let's get into this. First mobilization is coming your way. Now there's a couple of different ways that I like to mobilize this area, this piriformis muscle. One is with a foam roller, the other is with like a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. These are a little more precise and a little more aggressive, but I'll show you both ways. Now, how I like to start is if you just sit with one hip right on the foam roller, and then I'm gonna kinda lean towards the camera slightly. You'll feel increased pressure right through that glute, right through that tight piriformis area, but that is a good place to start especially if it's really tight, if it's really irritated, that's really uh, kind of mellow. That's on, that's on the gentler side of the spectrum with this. If you feel like you could do a little bit more than that, what I want you to do is now, so again, it's my right hip that's affected. If I cross my right knee, or excuse me, right, if I cross my right leg over my left knee, that's gonna put that piriformis muscle on stretch. And so we elongate it. And now as we roll that out, it's a little more tender. I always get a spot, it's always right there. It's a little more tender to do it that way, but most people find it a little more effective just because again, we're stretching while we're mobilizing. Um, on these, whichever way you prefer, about 30 to 60 seconds is what I typically recommend. Again, if you're looking for the quick version, it's just the 30 seconds on that mobilization. As I mentioned, you can also use a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball works well. Same mechanics apply. You're gonna sit right on that ball, and this is kind of the way that I would do it first, kind of go all around that muscle, find those areas where it's tender, where it's painful, kind of sit on that for about 30 seconds or you can continue to kind of do the mobilization with it. Um, the other thing that you can do if that's all right is we can then cross that leg over one more time and getting into that position again that's really tender because that's really precise but that's a really easy way that you can get right on that muscle and mobilize it. So again about 30 to 60 seconds on that is what I typically recommend. After mobilization, we're going to move into some stretching. Again, pick one or what I would recommend is do all three of these. This is what they look like. Go ahead and lay down on your back. The simplest way to stretch that muscle out is I'm going to bend my left leg up, assuming it's kind of the left leg or the left piriformis that's affected. Bring that up. And now with my right hand, I'm gonna grab my left knee and pull my left knee up and over towards my right shoulder. What we do is we introduce this hip flexion and adduction, and it really is just a great way to stretch that muscle out. This is an easy one to start with. Most people say that this is a pretty good stretch. I would hold this for 20 seconds three times, or again, if you're going for the quick version, just 30 seconds on that one. If you need more, what I recommend that you move into would be a figure four stretch or a piriformis stretch. What I'm going to do is now cross my leg over my knee with my hands. I'm going to duck down into this space right here and grab around the back of my right knee. Now I'm just gonna pull that knee up into my chest. So I'm trying to pull my right knee up into my right shoulder, kind of up into my chest, just until I get a really good deep stretch down here in that left glute. 
Again, because we're adding rotation to this, that's a really great stretch for that piriformis muscle. If you can do this one, this is the one that I typically recommend. Three times 20 second holds, or again, quickly for 30 seconds. Now, the last thing that I like, or the last stretch that I like to show people would be up against a bed. One of the common problems that I see this with is pregnancy. And so if you've got a, a belly here in front of you and it, it makes it really hard to do those two stretches that I just showed, you can come to the edge of the bed. This was actually my wife's favorite through all, all four of her pregnancies. You're gonna come to your bed and then just lay kind of your lower leg, your shin, down on the bed just like this. Now, as you lean forward slightly, you can use your hands to kind of control how much flexion, how much lean you get into this. You're really gonna feel that right up here deep in that left glute. And so that's what that third stretch looks like. 30 seconds if you're going quick or three times 20 second holds on that one. Finally, our last step is to strengthen the piriformis or to do some exercises that would activate that muscle. These are the three that I like for that. The first one is going to be a clamshell. You're going to lay down on your side with your affected piriformis up. So I'm on my left side. In this case, I'd be working my right hip with this exercise. What I'm going to do is I've got my knees bent, my feet together. I'm going to keep my feet together as I separate my knees. So I'm using that deep hip rotator to rotate my knee up towards the ceiling, hold one, two, and then return right back down to that starting position. So this is a really great way, again, that piriformis is a hip rotator. This is a great way that we can work some of that hip rotation. Again, just work some muscle activation into that muscle. It's a great way to increase strength, also a great way to kind of get it to release and reset. And on this, typically what I recommend is about 30 reps, about three sets of 10, three sets of 20, or again, about 30 seconds if we're going for the quick version. The next exercise that I like is a, well, we call it a fire hydrant muscle. It's a quadruped external rotation. This is what it looks like right here. We're gonna come down on all fours. Now in this position, I'm going to keep my hip bent. So meaning my, my hip is at a 90 degree and my knee is at a 90 degree. But what I'm going to do is pull it up towards the ceiling as high as I can and then right back down. You should get a good, just good contraction right deep in that glute, right in that piriformis area while you do this. This one's great. This is a great way to work even on the lower back pain. If you're experiencing that, your lower back has to hold your pelvis very stable while you're doing this exercise. Same recommendation on this one. I would shoot for about 30 repetitions. Three sets of about 10 to 20 is a great number to shoot for. Now this last exercise is one of my favorite ways to strengthen your piriformis because it's a little more functional. We're progressing things into an upright position. This is going to be a single leg deadlift. What we're gonna do is stand on that affected leg. Your non-affected leg goes back behind you as you hinge at your hips. So you're trying to keep your leg straight, the other, the leg that's moving in relation to your torso. So as that leg comes backwards, your body is going to fold forward. You're going to maintain your balance, good posture, good position. Now we pull with the glute to return to this upright position again. And so that is what the single leg deadlift looks like right there. The important part on this and where our hip rotators come in, I hope you can see this from this angle, is as I come down in this position, I don't want that hip to collapse. So if you find your hip collapsing towards the floor, kick on those hip rotators to keep it in a neutral position. I don't want it to fall to the floor this way. I don't want it to be open up to the ceiling this way either. We're going to try to maintain it in this nice neutral position. And then again, from here, we use the glute to pull ourselves up out of that position. And typically the recommendation there is about 10 reps, and then we're gonna repeat that three times. If you liked this video, if you found this beneficial, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. Hit the circle button right here to do that. If you wanna keep your hips strong, check out that video. If you wanna keep your hips mobile, check out that video down there. Hope this helps. Hope to see you again soon back here on Tone and Titan.